Hey, Andy here. Um, so I actually loaned out like five EV3s um, to a local school district so they could start doing some training um, for FLL coming up here in a little bit. And I really wanted to start playing uh, and working on something in the meantime. Um, so that sort of left me uh, without something to do, uh, which is unusual for me and like because I generally have a lot of it lying around. Um, but uh, fortunately, I had backed on Kickstarter the Fat Cat Lab uh, EV3 shield or cape for the uh, for the Beagle Bones. This is the original Beagle, Bo Beagle Bone. It's basically an embedded Linux computer. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of them here on my computer. This is an APRS I gate I did a blog post on a few weeks ago, stuff like that. This is the original Beagle board. Um, this is a panda board for the record. I got Raspberry Pis. Um, this is actually a similar, the exact same processor as the Beagle Bone, just in a uh, more control system. But anyway, so I backed that and I got this little gem, um, which is a cape for it. So you can see the Beagle Bone black sitting there underneath. Then I got this cape, it came with a battery pack. Um, and I've just plugged in some cables. I want to show you guys that it's actually really, really good. Um, it works really, really well, super easy to do. Um, all I had to do is just take a, a standard micro SD card um, and mount it in the Beagle Bone black with the correct image on it. So that took all of you know five or 10 minutes to do and uh, stuck it in there and uh, turn it on, it boots. Okay, so I just have some rechargeable batteries in here, so the voltage will be a little different, but just turn it on. Um, it should show up with the Texas Instruments logo here in a second. There we go, we can see it's working, the lights are flashing. Flashing lights are always great for an electrical engineer. So, we got booting up here. Um, and there we go, it looks like an EV3. Um, so we'll go over to the sensor view because I have a few sensors actually on here. So port view. So it does notice that I have a color sensor plugged into the correct port. And that is, in fact, if I route my massive cables here, there we go. There is port one and it will probably, it's looking at reflected light. Doesn't see much there. I'm sure if it looked around at other places, it would see more. Um, so that's cool. That works. Um, I can also set uh, the different sensors there on what they want to see, um, but this most definitely works as a reflective light sensor, and that's what it's seeing it as. So that's cool. I can also change it to, you know, maybe color sensor. Um, it has a little joystick down here. So there it sees color number one. Um, this old memory card is a pretty good color number two. Now it's going to say color number one. It doesn't quite see the color number two. Um, this is a pretty good green. Let's see my lights like it. Yep, there we go. Different there. So uh, I have a badge here left over from Spark Fun at Maker Faire. Let's see if I can grab that. This is from Maker Faire New York last year. This was uh, their badges and from Spark Fun. And it definitely sees that as a red. So that works well. Um, so color sensor seems to be working appropriately. Um, now let's go to sensor port 2, which is a touch sensor. And if we go over to that, and it's working exactly as a touch sensor would. No doubt there. It can only be a touch sensor, so that's also good. So they're both working. And then the last one here that we're sort of playing with seeing across the bottom there is our uh, IR sensor. So uh, it doesn't like the lights around me, but um, if I don't sh shine it directly at the lights, it will do distances and it can do the remote and the seek and all that. So that seems to be working pretty well. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I have a motor up here, um, and I just a regular medium motor. Um, I don't have a. Actually, I probably do have. Some, yeah, yeah. Look at me. I do have a, a 32 mod beam just lying around my desk. Um, I can put it in there, and it will turn. So. So that does work. Um, the Lego you find on my desk anytime. Um, so that does work. So that works uh, really, really well. Um, so I can exit out of this. This little button here is the back button. Um, they're not really labeled well um, on the screen, but uh, it does come with an acrylic cover that you can put over it and you know, do that. Um, the other fun thing that it does do um, is it will support Wi-Fi according to it. So I have one of the Wi-Fi dongles that should work, and there is a full-size USB port, as you can see there on the BeagleBone Black. So I'll plug that bad boy in. I haven't tried this yet, so live on camera. So let's see if it finds that Wi-Fi stick and goes with it. And uh, I can turn on Wi-Fi and let's see. It's thinking. 
can't really see any of the status lights turn on in there yet. Oh, but it says Wi-Fi's on. And I'm sure I could probably find connections nearby and all that. Um, nope, couldn't. Hmm. But it does say it's on, so I'm sure if I played with it a bit, I could, uh, I could probably get Wi-Fi working just fine. Um, actually, I can. I do have uh, an EB3 project window open here. Um, need to get into Wi-Fi. We'll see if I can uh, find a connection for it, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't have a connection, so we need to be able to find a connection. And yeah, it says it can't. Might be, might need to play with it a bit to get Wi-Fi to work. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely built in, and the firmware seems to be working with it. So uh, we'll take some playing around, I'm sure. Um, just like anything else, like I said, just took this out of the box. Um, but that works. Um, the other test that I want to see, uh, again, sort of live on camera, um, would be uh, plugging this thing in and making sure my EV3 software recognizes it. So I'm just running the cable here. Um, there is a uh, mini USB port on the BeagleBone Black, so I'm guessing that's what I'm going to use. Typically it's set up like as a virtual um, network port, um, but I do have it plugged in now, and, uh, and my EV3 uh, is clearly seen um, in EV3G. So uh, I'm going to move the camera angle around so you can sort of see me work in EV3G and uh, see the thing at the same time. So. Okay, so I had to rearrange my desk because space is a big premium. But if we go into our EV3G software here, we can see that the brick is still going good. Um, it doesn't indicate that I'm connected at all to my computer, but the computer does see it here. So I'll go with it for now at least. Um, my firmware, it says, is 106X. And if I go in here to the device, um, brick info here at the bottom, it does say I'm hardware V, um, but brick firmware 106X and ID of all zeros. So the firmware does match, um, and I am connected over USB, so that's positive sign so far. Um, battery life, it says, I don't know how much to read into that. Don't know how correct it is. Could be, might not be. It, it does pick up the correct name, EVB. Um, it does pick up what's on the various sensors, and it's the same readings we saw earlier. Um, so that's encouraging, and our IR is better. doesn't like the lights, but is better. Um, so that's cool. Um, so it would appear that the brick is working. Um, it doesn't appear to have Bluetooth. I did try that, and that didn't work. But uh, we'll try something really simple. Just drag up a media motor here into uh, EV3G, and then uh, let me go over here, and I'll put a little weight and then maybe I'll wait for a touch. I like my touch sensor. Um, so I'll wait for, the, for it to be touched, basically. And then oh, it would be fun to do. Let's see if it beeps well. So really, really quick and dirty little program here. And let's download and uh, let's give it a good name, too. So we'll call it. Go on. We'll call it uh, testing. So, and I'll click run. Okay. So that did work. The, the thing did go. And it is actually saying, if you look at it, it says it's running testing, which is good. And it should beep and stop after I hit the button. I didn't hear the beep. Um, I didn't tell it to wait for it to be done, though. So... We'll try that again. Um, the motor did turn when it ran, so if you do see that, and that did turn. Again, it's saying testing. We do have a little screen artifact going on up there, but that's okay. Yeah, it's not beeping. So I was just trying to play a test little, you know, sound here. You know, um, let's see what I can try here. Maybe I can get to say. Black. There, that works for me. Maybe a different color. I don't know. We'll say a number. Eight. That's fine. So the computer works. We know that much. Let's see it run again. Volume is set to 100, so we should be getting some sound. It does make that sound, but... Yeah, it's not... Maybe we'll add another wait for a second afterwards. Maybe that's it. Running around. It's spun. There we go. So it appears to be a bug in either the VM on here or on EV3G up there. I just had to add a, 
a wait after that, even though I told it to play once and then it should stop. So um, you might need to be a little finicky with that. Um, hard to tell if that's uh, the EV3 software or not. Um, to be fair, my EV3 software is slightly out of date on this computer. Um, I usually do a lot of my EV3 programming on my PC, so uh, my Mac's a little out of date um, with regards to that. But I can't complain too much. It does work, um, and it clearly is reading sensors and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, so for a good stand-in for a little bit, it'll be nice. Um, like I said, it did come with acrylic cases, um, so I can play with those and see how I can get that to work. Like I said, the best I can tell, it doesn't have Bluetooth, or at least it doesn't successfully open Bluetooth. Um, so that might be a firmware feature coming later. I didn't see it on the, uh, well, let's see here. It's saying visibility. It's saying it can do it. Let's see. Okay, well, we're going to go into the slow screen. Again, trying it again. We'll see what, uh, what happens. I didn't see it, it on the PCB anywhere. I didn't see an antenna or a little uh, Bluetooth thing, but could be mistaken. It could be built into something I don't know about. But certainly trying. I'll give it a few more seconds. Yeah, it's not starting it. Wi-Fi started faster and that wasn't successful, so I don't know if I should be looking for something specific or what really to look for in terms of uh, Bluetooth. I can't see the entire PCB. There's parts behind there I can't really get to. Um, but, you know, for something I backed on Kickstarter, I didn't really pay too much attention to it because I, you know, generally had an EV3 always on hand. Um, but I thought it would be a cool thing to play with. And it seems to be for core functionality. Um, I'm not going to go build a creeper with it, but... Uh, I will definitely use it for uh, just prototyping and checking out motor functions and stuff like that. And I'm sure the uh, people behind it will have a, a much more uh, robust system here in a little while. It is new, like I said, and it was on Kickstarter. I think you can get them now. I think they're like 70 bucks ish um, I'll try and see if I can throw a link in the description below uh, to help you out. But overall, um, nice little, uh, nice little uh, EV3 uh, with my BeagleBone Black. So uh, hope you enjoyed. So yeah, um, after digging up the spec sheet here, it does have Wi-Fi uh, support underway. Um, it does not have Bluetooth. It does have the 10100 Ethernet. So I guess if I did plug it in to my network, um, it would show up on there as what the machine would think is a Wi-Fi connection. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, should always check the data sheet first, I guess. Um, but it's a much faster processor, um, a lot more capable system. Um, the Beagle Boom Black is like 45 bucks. I just saw on Hackaday the other day that they have one that um, strips out like the HDMI and it's a little cheaper that's made by someone took the open source design, simplified it. So it is a cheaper option to buying potentially a EV3 brick, you know, um, by itself, but you do sort of lose the, you know, um, the Bluetooth side of things. Um, but it does have a whole bunch of different features. Um, it's got like you know, color screen and all that, uh, which is something the EV3 didn't have, um, and it's running the latest Linux kernel, so um, I think it'd be fun to dig into it and see if I can uh, remote into the device and actually use it like a Linux computer. Um, as you saw, I had a lot of them on my desk, and it's definitely something I think would be sort of cool. I know I can do that with an EV3, um, and I run EV3 dev a fair bit as well, um, so I know I can do that with both of those. Um, it'd be really cool to see if I could do that with, uh, with this little guy. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, talk to you later.